Let us begin with a very simple prayer. Is you know one in a chinek and nanke prumi and in a onion a bogey more bogey mud or banana abu chinek and nothing so but in a baby Yehovah. Elohim Adonai El Shaddai. Obozo di anga kange siwe jage manna ki me libe. Ozo di anga kange siwe boku a hansori. Ni me mwone ezi yoku. Kan me so ama yuwe waso mwone nanke brede ngosi. Ki nge yuwe potana lan so yubo biya fran nanke me libe. Obozo di anga kange siwe feri. Ni hino obo nane gibu chineke. Ni hino abu mano paho. Ini kereke na kwisi ala nyegi. Mwona madu na sopro ge. Lene papa ndo ni igwe. Le kwa nyamu le kwa nwa. Le kwa nyeri nenke gyongu yi kerese bede ngose. Ako hani esi nede mma. Anyo wanyo po mo biafra. Nandi ngono nwe na masi no wani. Ni we wako na bale igo ku nsonke gi. Nki nyanyi ka iwe basa ebe ndide ntuno. Kiwe we chana lanso kwa biafra nan ki me ligwe. Kiwe dopo tomo eno obu nke kwensu. Lugad nan di briteni ni wala. Kiwe sina koti chrebo fula ni janja wid wewe zugande. Li hino obu nane ki puri mi obu ke mato dendo. Anyane yoko kuni kenkanyi nan ke bre dengose. Obu ste na marage ne berege. Aniwe na yoge kiwe zopo tanyi nan ke berege. Na ka join ye. Ki we nyan ye ziye chiche ezi ngo ta mami ye. O ganire hon na nyan me korta wane na wane. Ke pule we si no mi umo ri wun na ye. Nki we we nye fe. Ka mara gini ye ki we pata. Le bende ke no. Li hino bo nane ki bu chine ke. Anye we na isi ala nye ki we na jage ma we ne toge. Na se o nye kre libe ma ke lo wama na mwa gonye kre ye. Onyin di mu ozi na efe. Wena goze ahansu ya mba nina. Onyo obo nani ya bebi gebi. Ekele. Ututo. Nsopro. E jama. Dile sosa ahansu ya. Evo go nyozo. Ubuga ma uro mba nina ebi gebi. Kana ajwa ki ise. 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 Okwa nozi yoma china eke. Hey. I'm sure you have your pen and your paper ready, all of you, all over the world, because we are going to preach as we have been instructed to preach tonight. Extraordinarily, I must say. Tonight, I am going to offend some people, and some of them are my friends. But God Almighty in heaven, the Alpha and Omega have asked me, to preach this very gospel tonight, and heaven knows I shall preach it. Therefore, I need to apologize in advance before we proceed. This evening, I am not going to lay any foundation or any preamble. I will delve straight into what is happening in the damnable zoological republic. And I want all of you to pay very close attention to every word I have to utter this evening because they are very, very important. Before we came on air today, late yesterday, a news broke concerning the abducted students from Kaduna. I'll come to the ones in Abia in a minute. According to the students that we are freed, from the kidnappers then, from the Fulani kidnappers then in Kaduna. These are the 27 kidnapped students of the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization in a place called Afaka in Kaduna State, who were, to the glory of God Almighty in heaven, reunited with their families after 56 days in captivity. 56 days they were held until their parents paid ransom to Fulani terrorists, or should I say Fulani Asorov, before they were released. But there was something they observed, which I want us to dwell upon this evening. According to one of them, 
that had the courage to describe the kidnappers. Mind you, these are people in Kaduna, so they are acquainted to Fulani. They know Hausa people. They know all the other tribes of the north. According to one of them, he said, some of the bandits we encountered are foreigners. They vowed to make Kaduna unsafe. They are foreigners. Please write it down. That's what I want you to note. Because I'm going to touch on this later on. The bandits kidnapping people in Nigeria are foreigners. Some of them are. Aided and abetted by the ones who are local. And they have said they will make Kaduna unsafe. Ostensibly for Christians who are in Kaduna. What I want you to note from what I've just said is that the bandits are, some of them are foreigners. Now we are going to ask questions later. And as we ask questions tonight, I want all of you to try as much as you can to answer these questions as we proceed. What it means in effect is that if people can come from Niger Republic, come from Mali, come from Cameroon, come from Chad, come from all these weird and wonderful places to come to Kaduna, to come and kidnap Christian students in Kaduna. It means there is something wrong somewhere. But the reason why some of you do not pay any close attention to this very obvious fact is because of the way you reason, the way you digest information, the way you interpret things that are happening around you. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because it means that all the fool fools, all the sophisticated morons, it means that all the fools championing and campaigning for one indivisible Nigeria, all of them who will come down very mightily and heavily on those who are pursuing their freedom, it means that everybody mouthing their usual rubbish about the territorial integrity of Nigeria do not understand what territorial integrity is all about. Follow this very carefully, what I'm saying. You know, when you listen to the army, sometimes it's about the territorial integrity of Nigeria. Territorial. Here you have foreign mercenaries, a foreign army in Kaduna kidnapping people. Very shortly, I'm going to ask all of you where you think these kidnappers are coming from and how come how come they managed to get through the border? These are the questions that you Nigerians never ask yourselves every blessed day. How did they cross the border? Come into Kaduna, acquire AK-47, then go to school to select Christians to kidnap. These are the things you need to ask yourself. All these idiots in your National Assembly, with the exception of one or two of, or two of them, like Habaribe, and maybe one or two other persons. They don't even understand what territorial integrity is all about. The territorial integrity of Nigeria has been breached not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, over and over and over and over and over again. They don't know what territor territorial integrity means. I believe that they understand what terroristorial integrity is all about. Because it is now a land of terrorists. A land of terrorists. The breaching of the territorial integrity of Nigeria, not on one occasion, but on numerous occasions, were carefully executed by the same Fulani people in Asorok, shouting about territorial integrity every blessed day. The same group of people. The same group of people. These Fulani Islamist politicians in Asorok and all over the north with their quizlings in the east and their sophisticated moronic partners in the west. If you add a few pastors in between, you will not be mistaken. These Fulani Islamist politicians and their cohorts right across every shade, every color, every tribe in the zoo, have themselves destroyed the territorial integrity of Nigeria by bringing in terrorists into Nigeria from across the Sahel to conquer indigenous populations. Fools like Devu Mahi, 
and uh, should I say, uh, Mrs. Tambuwal in River State, <laughs> we can, Mrs. Tambuwal. Fools like Devo Mahi and Mrs. Tambuwal must learn from this because these people think that they are dealing with normal human beings from the north, from the Fulani Caliphate Sahel, not knowing that every Fulani politician is a hardened terrorist. That is the reason why they went across the Sahel to recruit people and give them cattle to disguise their identity. Or should I say to validate their murderous mission. Do you know what is shocking about this whole thing? Not that these people are from Mali, from Senegambia, from all these places. These are the people they want us to give our land to, to do Ruga. Are, are you following what I'm saying? These are the same people that are telling us they are headsmen, it is their pastoral life and all that rubbish. These are the same people they want us to give our land to. I hope that some of you are following and you're listening, including Mrs. Tambuwal. I hope you're listening. You'll be talking like somebody who has been under the influence of Tombo for nearly two weeks. The people that did the kidnapping in Kaduna, most of them are foreigners. Foreigners. And you are busy doing BVN registration, NIM registration. They also have their NIM registration. These are Fulani, Fulani hardened criminals and murderers recruited by Fulani politicians from across the Sahel to come and take over Nigeria for them. Sadly, very sadly, some of you are yet to wake up to this reality. Some of you are still blinded by the idiocy and hypocrisy and the criminal tendencies of some of your pastors that I will come to later on. That was why I apologized in advance. I am going to annoy some people this evening. I must tell you the truth. Fulani Islamist politicians have destroyed the territorial integrity of Nigeria. They are the ones that brought in their fellow terrorists from across the Sahel into Nigeria without proper documentation at the border. They're coming from Sokoto, from Katsina, from Kanu, from everywhere across the north. They come in with their AK-47 or they acquire one once they get into the zoo. They now go on a kidnapping spree and ransom spree. They leave this play, they leave the zoo as multi-billionaires. Nobody is asking the federal government of the Republic of Nigeria how he have been waiting for this question every day. How did they get in? Who let them in? Nobody talks about these things. How did they manage to get to Kaduna? To a polytechnic? To go and take people who are in a polytechnic? How? How manage? They cannot ask these pertinent questions. Not a single one of them. What you have are idiots in the south. Say, oh, we need to build bridges. You need to try and form bridge with the north so you can get presidency. You don't know you are dealing with terrorists. These are not human beings. These are savage. These are animals. These are beasts. And these are the same people that you want us to do, Ruga. These are the same people that thought Jules Okalo gave land to at Lopa that kidnapped some students of Absu a few days ago. And of course, we know what we did. And uh, you know, they're very smart sometimes. They quickly release all of them. They should have held on to them. They should have held on. I, I was praying for them to hold on to them. Then we'll teach them a lesson. They will understand that every flesh bleeds. That is something they don't understand. Mrs. Tambua and the idiots like Omahe, you think you're dealing with politicians from the north. I feel sorry for some Yoruba pastors talking rubbish about Nigeria being one, all that nonsense. They claim they are prophets and will deal with them this night. Take up on Hong Kong, armed robbers and criminals with the Bible. I will deal with all of you tonight. You see me, Bunu, then, the Ara. You people are there 
your so-called territorial integrity have been breached not once, not twice, not three times, not four times. By hardened full and terrorists recruited from across the Sahel, all you need to validate the identity is you give them a few cattle, just, a few, just give them 15 cows, that's all. They become full and pastoralists in Nigeria. That's all it takes. The only way the only way they have managed to deceive all of you over the years is to think that anybody carrying a nama along the road is somehow a Fulani Nigerian or a Nigerian Fulani. Now listen to this. You know that they moved into Kaduna into Kebi State and a few others in the north. Remember, that is why when people say the bishop is a prophet, he's a prophesying, I look at them and I laugh at them. You know that poverty can do a lot of things. You know the same way that Africans are behaving today. You see you Yubo white people, they used to behave like that very, very in the dark ages. Very many centuries ago. You know that there is nothing that draws you closer to God than poverty. You know, poverty is miraculous. Once you're hungry like this, you start singing Joe Michael and Joe Gabriel coming to minister to you. The same thing happening in Africa today happened in Europe. Many centuries ago, Europeans were very, very poor, impoverished, extremely poor. And somebody gave them the Bible. And the same, that as idiotic as we Africans are today with religion, it was exactly the same way they were. In the same Europe you're seeing, in Germany, in France, in all those places. Very poor. They started seeing angels from heaven flying all over the place. Now that is, they, they no longer see angels anymore. Do they go to church? In Europe, no, they don't. Do they go to church anymore in America? It's only black people because they're poor in America. That's what the poor child shouting hallelujah every place they in the church. Do you songs of praise in the church? The people going to church today are those who are still poor. Because in Europe, anybody living in Europe can testify. Do they go to church anymore in Europe? The answer is no. They no longer go to church in Europe. Am I lying? That is why when you come to Africa, one idiot will tell you he's seeing a prophet, he is seeing prophecy. He is in prophecy. Your life will be better. You will get a new job. You are asking where you are being prayed for to get a new job. You used to be a factory producing shoes before. They closed it down. Turn it into a church. Praying for you to get a job. Ask the stupid pastor, where will I get this job from? Oh, hey. Poverty is the spirit, I'm telling you. Once poverty gets inside you, hey, if they quote Ecclesiastes, you'll be jumping up and down because you're very poor. Because you cannot reason very well. To compare to all those fools that call themselves prophets that cannot prophesy anything. Only a few months ago, I told the whole world live on Radio Biafra that there is a method to our madness. I think those were the exact words I used. There is a method to our madness. And unless you are on the inside, you can never ever understand it. You cannot understand what we are doing. You can never ever understand what we are doing. Because I get messages from heaven direct. You know what Elohim said to me? He said, you must continue what you are doing. You must continue what you are doing. That is something that a flay and a baby sabos can never understand. Holy Ghost Rimosi, heaven gave me a message. You must continue what you're doing. And I, I asked why. They said, I want to move their able-bodied men and women to the east. When they come to the east, you are going to kill them in the east. Those of them that can survive or, or that manage to survive who have nowhere to go back to. So that in years to come, wherever they settle, they will tell their children about you people. I didn't understand what uh, the message meant, and I kept praying. <laughs> Elohim said, you will bring them down to your land, and the real terrorists that they are grooming will take over their own land from them. 
I still said I don't understand. They gave me a message in Igbo language. Now I can't see how that hand. That hand with which they've tried to feed poison to other. And I must give it to you. I kept wondering. What is this whole thing all about? Until it started happening. I want to give you a very clean, fine example today. As to what heaven meant by keep doing what you're doing, draw them to the east, and I will hand over their land to vandals. And vandals are now in their land eating their flesh. I'll give a very simple example this evening. A humanitarian crisis is brewing in Zulu Emirates, in Cape State. Listen to the name. Bring your pen and paper, I said. Bring your pen and paper, for goodness sake. And note everything I'm telling you. They said there is a place called Zuru Emirates. Emirates is the word I want you to note. Write it down. In Kebi State, their villagers are fleeing their communities following the invasion of armed bandits. The way Guardian newspaper put it is this. Thousands flee Kebi communities over invasion by armed bandits. <laughs> uh, there was a brother of mine that wrote something today which with his permission I will quote Obona, he said all the demons of hell must overrun the north that Elohim said that he has unleashed that he has opened the floodgates of hell all the demons of hell they will eat the flesh of the fallen in the north They send their army, their zombie army, to the east, where they will be destroyed by Elohim. Then the sun will rise over the land of Biafra, never to dim again for eternity. It was today that the full weight of that message that I was giving dawned on me. When I was on air and I was saying that I would draw them to the east, and the real the bad eggs will take over their land. Uh, I didn't even know what I was saying. But it has happened today. Do you know who KB people are? You don't know, but I will tell you later. The people who are in Olu today fighting, most of them are from KB state. In the Niger they're in the Nigerian army. They came to Olu to kill the Afrom people. But as they left the north, their lands are being taken over by hardened savages and animals from across the Sahel that, they, that their political masters imported into the zoo. All of the army, Nigerian army in Biafra land, you are going to die there. You will die in Biafra land. You're going, all of you will die there. What the, Our people don't understand this very message that we are giving to them. But I do hope that after tonight, uh, they will get it. All of you will die in Biafra land, those in Olu, those elsewhere. The best option for you is to take off your uniform and run away before it is too late. Go back to your land, those of you from Kebi State. Go back to Kebi to go and save your land. Because as you are in Olu, you have no, you have no village anymore to go back to in Kebi. It's gone. Your village is gone and gone for good. That is the work of Almighty God in heaven. The same prophecy I was given, that there is no other religious minister in the zoo that can match 0.000001% of the accuracy of our prediction. No, nobody can. I'm begging. Now listen carefully to me. All of you in Biafra land, you're going to die. Even the Pakistani mercenaries that we saw in Olu, all of you will die there. If by any stretch of luck you manage to survive, what is coming? Because <laughs> they know now. <laughs> and I watch it tonight, guess you go. If by any stretch of imagination you get out of Olu alive and survive what is coming, then look for where else to go to because your land has been taken over by terrorists from the Sahel. 
those of you from Cape State in Imo State listening to my broadcast this evening, you are about to pay the price of stupidity. In your next life, if they mention Biafra, you, you tell your mother not to give birth to you. All of you, you are finished. You are going to die in certain. And by the time some of one or two of you may, may survive, by the time you crawl back to where you come from, <laughs> let me remind you once what's happening again, where you come from. They say it is a humanitarian crisis. Some of you are in Abuja, some of you are in Lagos writing rubbish every blessed day. Nigeria should be one. We should move forward. We should move forward. The idiots like a person writing rubbish. But there is a humanitarian crisis. They didn't say it's just banditry. Humanitarian crisis in Kirby State. Where some of you come from? That claim you are serving in Imo State. Who said to I told you, I can't see you in Gabun on. Somebody should uh, translate for them in, in Hausa language. So they understand what I'm saying. All of you are going to die in Biafra land. By the time one or two survivors crawl back to the north, in fact, you can no longer go back because your land is taken over. They, they, it reminded me of what some DSS um, officers told me in the days I was under their detention in Abuja, in the dungeon. One of them confessed to me when he was taking me to court. That uh, uh, they are trying to stop, uh, we are trying to stop you because we don't want what is happening in the north to happen in the east. Uh, because even me here, I am from uh, Adamawa, I cannot go to my village anymore. I've been in Abuja with my family ever since. But these idiots are in Abuja trying to sustain one Nigeria. The same one Nigeria that made it impossible for him to go to his village. He is in Abuja trying to sustain it. Things can never be the same again in Nigeria is gone. The zoo called Nigeria is gone. It can never be the same again. There are arms everywhere. Arms everywhere. It can never be the same. The same thing the army has, now the people, they have it as well. Is it not AK-47? Ordinary bullet. Uh -huh. You have it, and we have it. Let us see who is going to give up. We outnumber you by over 100,000 to 1. Even if we sacrifice 10 lives for one of you, we will kill all of you. That is why I know that Biafra land is a death trap for the zoo. They can never get out of there alive. They will die in that very place. DSS officers cannot go to their villages. <laughs> full and full and think they are smart, but they are very foolish. I know, I know they have this mentality of the vulture who delay. You know, full and <laughs> When you look at the zoo called Nigeria today, Fulani approach to the zoo is like the mentality of a vulture. Of course, they come from the foothills of Utajalon, which literally means the mountain of vultures in Senegambia, before they started their march towards Gobe, which they renamed Sokoto, that the, the, the stupid, idiotic house peasants allowed them to, to take. Oh, I feel sorry for... Anyway, there's no more house anywhere. They're, they're, they're finished. You see the male vulture, Udele, the male one. <laughs> the male vulture, Udele, was being interviewed, maybe by BBC, but I don't know. They asked the vulture, the male vulture. <laughs> the BBC will ask the male vulture, Udele, now that your wife is pregnant, what do you think the future holds for you? <laughs> BBC will asking vulture, Udele. That is, you know, the bird called Udele. Now, you know, vulture, it only eats some um, carcasses. It only eats some um, rotten meat. Dead bodies, that's what it eats. They asked a vulture, why, what is your take the, uh, about the impending delivery from your wife? <laughs> hey, and the... <laughs> The vulture, the male vulture calmly replied that it is God that gives a child. If my wife survives the delivery, we will celebrate. But if she dies in the process of childbirth, then I will call a feast because there will be food to eat. That is full of mentality in the zoo. Now let me tell you something. If you keep quiet, I want to talk to TB, Joshua, all these Yoruba criminal pastors. I want to listen to me very carefully. 
I want to also minister this evening to Mrs. Tambua. I want to that you fool Umahi to listen. X419. Umahi, I want to listen very, very carefully to what I have to say. The full learning approach to this. I want you to understand this evening. It is called the devil's alternative to the issue of one Nigeria. If they collapse you through banditry, they will overrun you because they believe they have superior weaponry. Right now, and all of them are in this game together. That's number one. If you if you sue for peace, which idiots like Omahi are doing, if you sue for peace, they will also get what they're looking for because they will plant Ruga in every local government area. The devil's alternative, whichever option you choose, men are going to die. Men will die. It doesn't matter the option you choose. If you wait for them to do things peacefully, which they'll never do, they are going to kill you anyway because they'll be Ruga. And you allow them to forcibly take over your land, you are taken over, they will take it by force, and Fulano will plant their people in your local government areas. That in the next hundred years, you'll be hearing about them all emirates. And then we'll be like Hausa people. Our great, great uh, grandchildren will now ask their parents, what happened? They will tell them, oh, no. there, there was somebody called Hopus Adema. He was playing politics. He loved Nigeria. There was one called Omahi. He loves uh, uh, Fulani. He used to be our brother. But then we are gone. As a race, we are finished. And I said to these fools, I said to Mrs. Tambuwal, and I said to, to, to idiots like, like Omahi, why can't you learn from history? The same thing I said to Yoruba. Yoruba, you have even experienced it yourself. T.B. Joshua is a Yoruba man. All these idiots that came, their pastors talking rubbish, they are all Yoruba. It has happened to them in Ilorin. I, I, I can't understand why they cannot, why they cannot see this. I don't understand why they cannot see it. I don't understand the reason why they cannot see it. I don't understand the reason why they cannot see it. I don't understand it. TB Joshua, you're a Yoruba man. Are you telling me that you don't, you cannot see what happened to a Lauren, how Fulanis took it from you? You cannot see it? Mrs. Tambua, can you not even see? Because that is saying where we come from. Can you not see even the oil that is in your water? You don't own any oil well there. They belong to, to your husband and their people in the north. Can't you even see it? Do you understand what I'm saying now? They get you to hate your own people. That is the classic Fulani movement. They get you to start quarreling amongst yourselves. That is what they specialize in. And as you are quarreling, they are picking you off one after the other. People in Kebi State, are they not Muslim? Uh, are some of them not even uh, Fulani and uh, Hausa and all the rest of them? But the bandits came and they are running away. But they are mostly doing Allah Akbar. But they are running away from, from their homes and their villages. You people, you don't learn. You know nothing. Now, listen. <laughs> Agamez Yunezio. <laughs> Fulani Caliphate. Fulani Caliphate is dealing with you people. But you don't know it. They are like the vulture. Nigeria is pregnant. If Nigeria dies during the pregnancy, they benefit. Nigeria gives birth to the Aruga, which they want. A new Nigeria, which they want, is also to their benefit. The only people aiding and abetting them are these quizlings, if you from the East intellectuals and sophisticated morons from the west you want to answer a citizen you want to be seen as somebody who's detribalized as you're detribalizing yourselves the Fulanese are tribalizing you the Fulanese are tribalizing you because you don't understand anything now i want to give you people a brief history of kb you know kb state kb state kb kb mm -hmm. brandon kb you don't know the history uh, very very briefly i want to give it so the, that you can situate what i'm saying you can now better understand what i'm telling you now listen very carefully
KB State that you're looking at KB is a traditional Fulani homeland. Those they call the Banza Bakwai uh, of Hausa land. Sorry, and even on Instagram, <laughs> uh, Zoo, Zoo, they are spending a lot of money to start to curtail us, but they have failed. KB is a traditional Banza Bakwai state of the Hausa kingdom. And you may not believe it. People, Hausa people have been living inside the KB state 600 years before Jesus Christ was born. It was Hausa. They've been living there almost 600 years before Christ was born. <laughs> As part of the uh, Songhai Empire and all the rest of it. <laughs> Then in the second half of the 15th century, <laughs> they have had 14 something and the rest of it. The Fulanis came for the first time in Kebi State. I am telling the soldiers now in all from Kebi. I want to tell you your history because you don't know. Because you are very foolish. The same thing you are doing was exactly what the Fulanis did to your, to your progenitors. And that is why you are a Fulani slave till this evening. You are in all day one Nigeria. One Nigeria for who? One Nigeria for who, I'm asking you? One Nigeria for who? Now, listen. The Fulanis first attempted to conquer KB State in late uh, 1400s, many centuries ago. But in the early 19th century, they converted some of you to Islam. <laughs> That's how they were not traditionally Islamists before. The Fulanis came very shortly, telling them about uh, Allah and Muhammad. <laughs> Took some of them. I told you before, it, is, it used to be a Hausa kingdom, but today it is a Fulani emirate, the emirate of Kebi. Do you understand me now? So if you are in the Nigerian army right now, serving wherever, thinking you're trying to defend Nigeria, your fatherland and all the rest of it, and you're from Kebi State, I say to you, Nto, because your state is gone. It is gone. It is gone. Kebi State, for those who don't understand who we are, what is happening, KB State <laughs> is populated by Hausa people, not Fulani. Hausa are the owners of KB State. But the Hausa people, they are in Olu, in Imo State, doing one Nigeria. Nigeria must stand. Our commander in chief gave us order. Nigeria is one, unity by force. But his village is gone in KB State. I can't see how I go on. <laughs> uh, they are mean. In KB State, you have Hausa people that are there. In Kebi State, you have a sprinkling of Fulani. Now, let me shock all of you. They are saying, we are the North. We are the Northerners. It's rubbish. There's nothing like, there called Northerners. Because inside even Kebi State, there is the Lena people. Or Lena people, if you, if you prefer. In the same Kebi State, you have the Busawa people. They are not Hausa. They are not Fulani. These are the minorities of Basanjo was talking about. They are going to suffer. Now I want to ask of Basanjo tonight. How about the Busawa people who have been chased away from Kebi State by bandits? What's going to happen to them? Are they not suffering? You know, people come up sometimes. They claim because their name is known all over Nigeria. They can make whatever idiotic statement they like and they get away with it. Look at our Basanjo. Of course, he's not a learned man. He's not polished. Which I get to unknown gunmen later. Because it was a Basanjo who introduced the unknown soldier. You see, is it not true? It was a Basanjo who brought in unknown soldier. These days, we, people have unknown gunmen. We don't know who they are. But of course, we are praying for them because they're doing a very wonderful work. Who brought in unknown soldiers? It's not your Basanjo. Now you have unknown gunmen in the East. And the people are complaining. But when he, when uh, unknown soldiers went to go and kill Fela's mother, all of you were there. All of you idiots now preaching one Nigeria, you were there. 
Did you ask them then, reveal your identity? Uh, uh, what's your non-soldier? You never said a, you never said a word. Cowardly black people. In Kebi State, we have the Leona people. We have the Busawa people. We have the Dukawa people. We have the Dakakari people. We have the Kambari people. We have the Gungawa people. We have the Kamuku ethnic communities. All in Kebi State. Not Fulani. Fulani is um, uh, maybe about uh, 50,000 people. But they are the emir, they are the everybody, they are the prince, they are the emirate, they are everything. These people are not Hausa, they are not Fulani. If they have any brain in their skull, they will understand we are fighting for them because once we are fighting, I've given you an example with the Huguenots of France. These are Protestants. They were suffering under the persecution of the, of, of the Roman Catholic Church in France. England opened their doors and their shores and said, come, we will accommodate you. Because I feel sorry, in the next uh, maybe 10 years, the Busawa people will be no more, the Dukawa people will be no more, the Dakakari people will no more, Kambari people will, Gungawa will be gone, Kamuku communities all obliterated. In, in Obasa, just one Nigeria. Obasa, why don't you go and save them in Kebi State now? Go and save them now. They are minorities, go and save them. You will not talk, you, you will not talk. When it comes to setting people free, you start to march your rubbish. Go and save them in Kebi State now. They're in trouble in Kebi State. Go and save them, let us see. Because you don't have any brain and you cannot reason properly. This is just the beginning. I told them that if you don't let Biafra go, this God that we worship will destroy Nigeria beyond recognition. It happened to Pharaoh. In the Bible, Pharaoh was mocking God. Who is this your God? Go and sit down. That is why I feel sorry for the likes of TB, Joshua, and other mega pastors you have in the zoo. All of you are going to hell. In the God come more. All of you are going to because you people are children of perdition. You don't preach the word of God. You people preach the word of Lucifer. You people are Luciferians. You worship Satan. You don't plan to get from God. You cannot see anything. You all of you, you claim your prophets. You could not predict what is happening in the zoo today. The something I told you in 2012, 13, 14, 15 is happening today. Now listen. When Moshe Moses told Pharaoh that Elohim said, "Let my people go," he refused. He said, "It's nonsense." Hey, I'm talking rubbish. Are you not here? Uh, yeah, are you not our servants here? The same thing they're saying. Are you, don't people have shops here selling motor spare parts? Are you people not the ones doing trading here? How can God come to save you people? <laughs> and I said to them many years ago, Elohim said, let my people go. And I went on to add, if you do not let us go, Nigeria will be worse than Somalia. I made it very clean. Clear. I don't believe in stupid uh, prophetic pronouncement. Very clear and clear. Somalia will be better than the zoo called Nigeria. If you don't let our people, if you don't let the children of God go, you will be, God will visit his anger. People don't know, as I told Britain, I told Britain the same thing. Regardless of their first world state, I said to Britain, if you continue to meddle into the affairs of Biafra, God will divide Britain into pieces. Will cut Britain into pieces. But your pride, you will know it is because of Biafra. But your pride will not allow you to come out to say publicly it is because of Biafra. God will destroy Britain. Before the whole world, you will see it. Now they have realized their mistakes. They are going back. Little by little, of course. God will destroy Nigeria beyond redemption. Many of you Shouting one Nigeria, you're going to die. Many of you will die. Because of that one Nigeria, you're going to die. Write it down. I don't, don't say, don't, don't misquote me. Write it down, I said. All of you championing one Nigeria, prominently, you're all going to die. Not only are you going to die, your, your race, your, your lineage, your family will be wiped out from the face of this earth. Your name will be gone. Write it down tonight. Today's date is um, the ninth day of May 2021. 
day and I'm pen pack or write it down on a piece of paper. All of you are going to perish. And I am bringing a curse upon every pastor who will ever open his stupid stinking mouth to talk about one Nigeria. Shame shall befall you. About one Nigeria is a child of Lucifer. If you talk about one Nigeria, you are a child of Lucifer. That means there is no God inside you. If there is God inside you, how can such a thing be happening in Nigeria now? How is that possible? How is that possible? I'm asking you. And you claim you're a child of God, you couldn't say it. Some of them claim we are children of God, we are this, we are that, we are prof uh, uh, prophets. You could not see, you couldn't have predicted. You're only coming out now to say, oh, don't worry, Nigeria will not break. Nigeria is not going to break. None the can cannot break Nigeria. Sunday Boho cannot break Nigeria. Did I tell you I was going to break Nigeria? God will destroy Nigeria because his glory cannot be taken by man. Some of these stupid idiotic prophets or oh, claim they are prophets, they're like Pharaoh. They're even worse than Pharaoh. They read the Bible, oh. they claim they are, they, are, they are Bible scholars. They read the Bible. But they don't understand what the Bible is talking about. Because they worship the God of mammon, the God of money. Tithes and offerings, that's all they're interested in. Private jets and flashy cars. They're not even ashamed. Do you know, as the leader of IPOB, I am ashamed to drive a car. Do you know why I'm ashamed to drive a car? Because people are contributing money towards a project of this magnitude. When I have a car, when people give me a car, I begin to feel ashamed of myself that I'm driving a car. Even when you buy jet, you're not even ashamed of yourselves. You are not even ashamed that the poor people who are contributing this money they are contributing because thinking they will go to heaven. Thinking you pray for them, there will be a miracle. If you people claim there is a miracle, pray for a miracle not to happen in Nigeria. You've been praying for many years. The more churches you open, the more mega auditoriums you build, the more uh, taranites you have, the more bandits are taking over your villages. Don't you understand it? Ndiara. Now listen. Pharaoh made the same mistake. And God will use Nigeria and Britain as an example to the whole world that their friends are his children. By the time God, the anger of God is done upon Nigeria, believe you me, oh God, if you see a Biafran, you start running. You are about to see hell in the zoo called Nigeria. Now, the stupidity of how some people in Kebi State <laughs> Stupidly taken over by Fulani people. The stupidity of the Lelona people, the Busawa people, the Dukawa people, the Kamuku people, the Kambali people, the Gungawa people, the, the Dakakari people of Kebi State. Some of them in Nigerian army and in Nigerian police. In the east, looking for who to kill. Whereas their village is gone. No? Kebi State is finished, is gone. Their stupidity is only matched by the idiocy of Yoruba media houses, their journalists and their mega rich pastors. These three groups of people in Yoruba land. Uh, my happiness today is that there are vibrant, young, energetic Yoruba men, even older ones, like Akinto, men who are vibrant, coming out to fight like men for their freedom. Ignoring the, the fools and the buffoons on the pulpit. Very wicked, avaricious men and women. All they care about is money. They claim they are, they are pastors and they are prophets. They cannot see anything. They can't even see their backside. They cannot see anything. Every year you pray for Nigeria. Every year Nigeria gets worse and you claim you're a prophet. <laughs> Every time. Come on, my brother. Every year you're praying. Let us pray for our country. Let us pray for Nigeria now. Before you finish praying, your, your church is on fire. Bandits have taken over your village. Fulani from Sahel are beheading and massacring people. The next Sunday, you want, let us pray for Nigeria. Let's pray for Nigeria. You don't even, you, even God is sending you a message that the prayer points you are presenting before him, he doesn't want it, yet he cannot hear. 
I thank God for the Wuhus, the Adams, uh, Ghani Adams of this world. I thank God for the Akinto years of this world. I'm telling you the truth. Because if not for, 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 Middle Belt also wants to leave, <laughs> they will now know that we are not mad anymore. That our brain is correct. You don't know that? They now know that our brain is correct. These are the things you must understand. These are the things you must follow religiously and studiously for you to appreciate the miracle that God is doing. What is happening in Nigeria now is a miracle from God in heaven. God is about to destroy Nigeria beyond recognition. You have people that claim they are the men of God lying. They are holding the Bible and they are lying. If Nigeria is meant to be good, how come things are getting worse every blessed year? Just explain that to me, please. Explain it to me. Tell me why people you claim are foreign, foreigners are in your country with AK-47 kidnapping you and you're paying ransom. You're not even ashamed of yourselves to say that Nigeria will get better anymore. How come those who are shouting every day, territorial integrity, you are there and it is being breached on a daily basis and you cannot do anything. 200 million people cannot remove one corrupt terrorist minister. 200 million people and you're telling me that you're a nation, you're a country. Shame on all of you. I preach the truth, huh? I don't give a damn. T.B. Joshua has prayed for me before, for your information. He's a good friend of mine, but I must preach the truth. That is why people don't understand how we do things in IPOB, because uh, those I love are those that do the things I ask them to do. If you feel because I'm close to you, you can mess about it. I will expel you from the movement. If you do what I ask you to do, then you can stay with us, because we are marching forward. Believe you me, we are. Unrestrained, of course. The stupidity of all these people in the army, Nigerian army, fighting civilians in the east as their villages are being taken over. The only people who are equally idiotic as they are are Yoruba media houses, the Eflefus from the east, <laughs> intellectuals, quizlings like uh, uh, Mrs. Stambual and Omahe. Yoruba journalists, uh, very, very bad. And the, and the Igbo ones as well. Oh. And your mega rich pastors. They think if Nigeria collapses, they are, where would they pack their jet? Because I know that in Yoruba land, you have savvy, intelligent young people, men and women, who are championing Oduduwa. Once Oduduwa comes, these are well-led, well-learned people. They will start paying taxes or packing those jets on, on the tarmac. They will start paying. They will start being controlled the same way that Charity Commission in England regulates the churches. They know. That's why you want Nigeria. We are thing uh, where people are very, very corrupt. Where you can do whatever you like. You come out and say, hey, he's a man of God, a man of God. He has 10 million auditorium. You people, you people, you people. <laughs> well, I'm not doing anything with friendship. Oh. I'm going to the friendship. I'm not doing anything with it. If you believe in freedom for the people, you are my friend. Any day you come out and you say that Nigeria should be one, you become my mortal enemy from that very day. Because you are an idiot. You are a fool. These same people in Yoruba land, I must say, championing one Nigeria, writing every blessed day, hey, uh, unknown gunmen is, is IPOB ESN. <laughs> you know how foolish people are. They are like this. Eh? How was that recruits in the army that their villages have been taking over in Kepi State? They are so foolish. You want to keep Nigeria one so Tinubu can go in. You start eating money. Yeah? <laughs> uh, Lord, have mercy upon your souls. Your wretched, filthy souls. Your land is being gradually eroded. And you're busy reporting the junk that most of your satanic pastors are predicting about uh, Nigeria being together in the future. I asked you a simple question. If I go to any of these useless churches in Nigeria, all these idiotic churches in Nigeria, I will say to you, Pastor, I have been praying for Nigeria to be better for the past 20 years. Instead, it's getting worse. When do you think it will get better? You say, oh, sow seed and plant, uh, what are the plants? All that rubbish. Because there is poverty in the land. 
people can no longer reason properly. And the Yoruba journalists, Obasanjo, all the, all the criminal pastors with their two or three jets having fun. <laughs> There are those Ogun indigents from Obasanjo state. <laughs> that is how foolish the whole thing appears. But believe you me, it is true. <laughs> Obasanjo is shouting one Nigeria, negotiating with bandits, paying bandits money, meeting Sheikh Gumi, the chief terror negotiator, and all that rubbish. In his state, Ogun state, his fellow Nigerians, fellow Yoruba people, are in refugee camps in the Republic. There are Yoruba journalists from Ogun State, isn't it? Writing one Nigeria. Let Nigeria be one. Let's move forward. This thing uh, Namdekam is doing. This thing Ibo is doing. This all that's rubbish. I mean, this is all that rubbish. <laughs> Your villagers are in Benin Republic in refugee camps. Some of them came back yesterday. You know, because of their shame, because of what, what I say here on this platform, because of their shame, because of their shame, they no longer want to publish the news. They came back yesterday and they were asking the governor of Ogun State, where is the housing you promised us when we come back? These are Yoruba people, refugees, IDPs in Nigeria. You have a Yoruba man with the guts to rise up and talk about one Nigeria when his own people are refugees in the Republic. And now you can appreciate what ESN has been doing. Because when you go through the problems of other people, you now begin to appreciate what you have closer to home. Do you see all that sacrifice we are making? Do you see all that confrontation and everything? That is why some of you are not IDPs today. Had we allowed the Fulanese to overrun a Boeing state four years ago when they started, or when they intensified the attack, most of you came to me and said, oh, please stop, stop. I said, no. Heaven asked me to do something, and that's what I'm doing. Today, there is no Mieti Allah. But in fact, I believe there is, no, there, is no, there is no credible, or should I say, formidable terrorist cell we have in Biafra land. It's the army and the police that are now doing the kidnapping. Fulani army and Fulani police. They take off their uniforms, they turn to kidnappers and armed robbers. They are the ones who are stealing, and we are going to catch one of them one day. And we'll show all of you. Yoruba people are in refugee camps so in the Republic. A Yoruba man from the same Ogun state is telling about one Nigeria. Let Nigeria continue. So you prefer your people, okay, when they run away into the Republic, you will expand the farm. Or maybe Oyedeko or whatever pastor. Or, or TB Joshua. You, you acquire land very cheaply in Ogun to build a, a mega plaza or, or mega auditorium that will contain one million people to be giving you tithe and offering. Do you understand it? I'm sure you do. Fulani, the same Fulani you want to be in the same country with, they chased you away into the Republic. If not for what Yoruba One Voice is doing, uh, the words, the encouraging words of Ghani Adams and the uh, activism of Iboho and, of course, the wise counsel of uh, Professor Kinto, do you think that you, many more will be in exile? Many more Yoruba people will be in refugee camps in another country. So then Obasanjo can extend, the, expand his water farm. Let, let us move our country forward. Let us move Nigeria forward and forward. As they're, they're moving you into the Republic, into refugee camps. As you're moving forward. That was why we came down very hard on the intellectuals we have in the East. We don't give them any breathing space. They can write all their flowery junk from now till next year. Once you publish it, their fans will rubbish it immediately. They will rubbish it there and then. Tell you, you are, you are no body, you're writing junk. Look at um, your Yoruba brethren writing good, good, good grammar. Circumstances beyond my control. The circumstances have gone beyond their control because they are refugees in the Republic. But they are, they are, they are in Ogun State. I don't want Nigeria. Makadega Mama. Black people. This your G. My good friend TB Joshua reported by another Yoruba junk gutter media why Nigeria will not break up. TB Joshua releases prophecy. You'll be releasing this prophecy every place that year. The more you release, the more Yoruba people you have in refugee camps in the Republic. The more you release, the more towns have been taken over by a foreign terrorist from the Sahel. You're not even ashamed of your. Be they behave like like harlots, you know, like prostitutes. They have no, you know, I'm going to be
You have no shame. You, you have they, these people. They, how can you claim you're a pastor and you have no single shame? Every year you release prophecy, it never comes to pass. You're still releasing prophecies. Chai, have no shame, honestly speaking. Why, uh, once a political class, Nigeria will not disintegrate. And then when it does, anybody who goes to TB Joshua Church after, Niger after the zoo called Nigeria is broken into pieces, then you know you are worse than an animal. You are a fool. God is about to disgrace TB Joshua because the zoo will break. The zoo must fall. It's written in heaven. The, zoo, the what I'm telling you, I still preaching since the year 2012 that the zoo must fall. And it's, it's collapsing before your eyes that you may see it. Not behind your back, before your eyes. You, you cage poor people with your perverse doctrine and, and in idiotic, unfulfillable prophecies. Every year prophecy. Every year prophecy. Every year prophecy. None of them comes to pass. Not absolutely none. I told you how many months ago how they will come to the east. Their land will be taken over by criminals. Is it not happening? Is, is, that, is that what I'm telling you now? Is it in the Guardian newspaper? Are, there, are you telling me there are no soldiers from KP State in, in all? Of course, there are, there are plenty of them. But their land, they'll have nowhere to go to again. It's over. Nigeria only has 250,000 men under arms. Only 250,000 men under arms. When I went to Omaba in Onisha, the crowd that came to see me, the young men that came to Omaba in Onisha, outnumber Nigerian army. How can they win? I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible, isn't it? They know they're fighting a losing battle. You can never win. You can never, ever win. Never, ever, ever. Everything from Yoruba is popular. The, the, the popular televangelist, everything. Every, if you come from, if you're not Yoruba, and Yoruba media is nothing about you, you're not popular. It's only their own that is popular. Others are not popular. <laughs> Zoo and parochialism. Everybody's about their own tribe. So other pastors are not so popular. It's only your own that is popular. Oh, dear me. Open is your TB Joshua, were you a Christian? Were you born a Christian? Because fake, <laughs> fake prophets, are, are somebody wrote, are products of a decayed Nigeria. That is why you are stinkingly rich at the expense of your poverty stricken followers. You have a private jet. Yet people in your congregation, they don't have any. Because you people are fake. You people are fake. You are a Muslim. TB Joshua, you're a Muslim with other people, all these mega commercial pastors in Yoruba land, you are all Muslims before I went to. I have nothing against Islam. As I said, when I was in detention, I read the Quran. I have nothing against Islam. We are Muslims before. Am I, am I saying the truth or not? All of you were Muslims before. <laughs> Today, you, you have private jets, courtesy of the idiocy of those that call themselves Christians. <laughs> the, you people are the problems facing ordinary people in Nigeria. But I blame all of you that go to their corn shop <laughs> every every Monday, Wednesday, uh, Saturday, Sunday to give them tithes and offerings. If you argue that Nigeria should be won, then you are questioning the reason why God allowed the Israelites to leave Egypt. Because if there were TB, Joshua, and all these fake criminal pastors, then... They would have been saying to Pharaoh, Oh, don't worry, let us be one. We need their labor, we need their cheap labor. They must be here. That means that you're saying that the word of God cannot come to pass because you're benefiting because you are criminals. I want to ask TB Joshua a question this evening and all the other criminal pastors you have all over the zoo, not just in Yoruba and all over the place, there are criminals everywhere masquerading as men of God. I want to ask them a very simple question. A very, very simple question this evening. 
I want to prove to all of you that these pastors, that they are fake. I want to prove to all of you that these people, they, they worship Lucifer. They don't worship Almighty Living God in heaven. I want to prove it to you. With the Bible, I'm not going too far. <laughs> I think there was a place in the scriptures where it says, do not add, do not subtract. No, I won't add anything. I will give you the literal meaning of what I'm about to present to you tonight. I must give you this very message. I want to remind T.B. Joshua about the scriptures he claims. Of course, he said he was a Muslim before. Maybe he didn't quite read uh, the whole scripture. Should I say the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation? He now, maybe he didn't have time to read it. He just wanted to make money. And by talking about Yishev, he blessed day. I feel sorry for you people. I want to refer T.B. Joshua and all the other criminal pastors against freedom for Yoruba people. I want to refer you to Genesis chapter 13 from verse 5 to 13. Genesis 13. Those of you, if your Bible is closed, I will say I call it Torah is the Old Testament. Go and pick up your Torah, the Old Testament, please. And open it up. Genesis chapter 13. And I will read for you Abraham then called Abraham and Lot. They separated. These are blood relatives, Abraham and Lot, because I believe that Lot was the child of the sister of Abraham. Uh, why did they separate? Um, I want to now lecture TB Joshua on what the scripture says and all these other fake pastors that you have talking rubbish about global agitation and freedom. All of you idiots talking about one Nigeria. I want to educate you with the Bible. Because every answer on this earth to every problem, you can find it in the scriptures. Now, listen very carefully this evening, please. Abraham separated with Lot. Why? As a result of a quarrel. They were quarreling. The same way that everybody is now quarreling in the zoo, there was a quarrel. Then, I want all pastors to listen, please. There was a quarrel. At the beginning of this very story, Lot was described as a very wealthy man. Like Abraham. Abraham was in Egypt for a while, then came back to the land of Cana, not Canaan, but Cana, that's the proper name. Abraham offered Lord, his relative, instead of us to fight, let us separate. But what is so shocking is the reason why they were fighting in the first place. That is why I said to people that hey, your pastors don't know what I'm talking about most times, or most of them. When I tell you the reason why Lot separated from Abraham, you will not believe it. It is happening in Nigeria today. What is that thing? <laughs> and I will read verbatim what the word of God says, the Bible. Or should I say the Torah? And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks, flocks <laughs> and herds, cattle, nama, and uh, ram and, and cattle. Listen carefully. And tents. Uh, verse 6, and the land was able to bear them that they might dwell together. For their substance was great so that they could not dwell together. In the beginning, the land was very fertile like Nigeria. Before 1960, after 1960, everything was okay. All was feeding large and everything. But in 1967, something happened. That caused them not to dwell together anymore. Now, verse 7 of Genesis chapter 13, verse 7. And there was strife between the headsmen. The same headsmen you have today, oh, headsmen. It's in the Bible, no? What made Abraham to separate from the native? It's the same headsmen, the full army headsmen in the Bible, in the Bible. T.B. Joshua, are you listening? And all the other criminal pastors, are you listening? Kamkuzerin, you, you don't know God. You have, uh, you, don't, you don't know God. <laughs> and there was strife between them. There was problem between them. I am referring all the pastors to Genesis chapter 13, verse 7. Headsmen. The same headsmen you have today in Nigeria. Headsmen. And when headsmen begin to cause trouble, the only thing to do is to divide. That is what the father of all nations taught us, Abraham. Hey, <laughs> All glory will go to Elohim in heaven. There was strife between their headsmen. 
the headsmen of Abraham. Maybe I don't know if they are full and you or not. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe full and headsmen belonging to Abraham and full and headsmen belonging to Lot. Do you know what they said? Uh, what I say is that even in the holy book, cow and headers were also a problem that led to division. Cows and headers. The same thing you have today. What are we suffering from? Cows and headers from Yediala. Terrorist group. Cows and headers. The same thing that caused Abraham to separate from the relative lot. And the Canaanite and the Perizzites dwell then in the land. It wasn't the land of Israel then. The Canaanites were there and the Perizzites were there. And Abraham said to Lot, Let us not quarrel, please. Let there be no strife between us. I am begging you, between me and between you, between my headsmen and between your headsmen, for we are the same blood, we are the same brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Look at all this land in front of you. Please, take one. Let me take one. That we may not fight anymore. That we may remain good relatives. This is what the Bible says. And Abraham said to Lot, If you take the left hand, I will go to the right. If you take the right hand, I will go to the left. Rather than us quarreling every blessed day, please let us separate. Headsmen. Abraham, Lot, in the Bible, separation in the Bible. And you're telling me that these pastors, that they believe in God, that they read the Bible? Are you sure they read the Bible? There was a quarrel, not fight, or not, they didn't go to war. But Abraham said, let us have peace. You are my brethren. Let us separate. And uh, an idiot is telling me somewhere in, 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 in Lagos, uh, uh, God said Nigeria should be one. When there are headsmen involved, headsmen, the same thing, the same headsmen that caused Abraham to leave Lot. And say, go your separate way. Let me go mine. Open again. What I'm telling you is what is in the Bible. I'm not, I didn't make anything up. I want to prove to you that some of these pastors championing one Nigeria, they don't read the Bible. Tomorrow they say, Abraham is father of all nations. Abraham is father of all nations. But what Abraham did, he cannot do. There was strife in the land. Headers, full of headsmen, we are there then. Moving cattle. Perizzites and Canaanites. And they clashed. <laughs> it's not today that clashing started, though. They clashed then. And now, as we are clashing, Elohim said, let there Lord, take one side, Abraham, go one side, let us uh, separate in peace rather than fighting. That's what should have happened. That, I expect all these pastors to know all these things, but, uh, you know, all these uh, criminal pastors with their fake Christianity do not understand the scriptures. Neither do they have what it takes to interpret clearly what the scriptures is trying to convey to us. Some of them were Muslims before they discovered that African version of evangelical Christianity is a lucrative business. That is why they lack basic understanding of the word of God, which is clearly evident today. Because if they knew Genesis chapter 13, 5 to 9, they will not be talking rubbish about one Nigeria. Never, ever, ever. And I have a word for some of you superstitious baboons from Africa that uh, attend to these criminals and string to pastors. Europe advanced to where they are today, a position of preeminence in world affairs, because they challenged the doctrine and unscientific orthodoxy of the Church of Rome. They challenged the Pope. Do you know about the Enlightenment movement? Founded by the Medici family of Florence in the medieval times. Are you aware of the Enlightenment movement across the whole of Europe? When European crown heads sat together and said, from today, no more superstition. We submit everything to the altar of reason. Anything that doesn't make any sense, we will not accept it. Roman Catholic Church. 
the mother church itself. Do you know who is called Galileo? Maybe some of you will not know because you're in the zoo. You don't go to school. You only go to learn how to read and write if, if it's at all possible. The Roman Catholic Church nearly killed Galileo when he, when he said that the earth was round and that the earth was not the center of the universe. This Roman Catholic Church nearly killed him. But today you are able to use a mobile phone. You are able to do many things. You are able to enter into very tall buildings without collapsing because of the theories and hypotheses of this very great man, Galileo, Galilei. He was the father of physics and engineering, Galileo. But when he was telling the church the truth, they wanted to kill him. <laughs> they said he's, 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 he's a heretic. <laughs> you antichrist. <laughs> oh dear, poverty is a disease. He is also the father of observational astronomy because without satellites in the air, Today, you couldn't have used a mobile phone. And after him came great men like Hubble. Do you know about Hubble? The Hubble telescope? Have you heard about it before? No, you would. Some of you were educated in the zoo. You will not know. Galileo was ordered to turn himself into the Holy Office to see the Pope. To begin his trial. For daring to hold the belief that the earth revolves around the sun. Which was deemed heretical by the Catholic Church. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are people actually following what I'm saying tonight? You see an idiot that left Islam because he knew that Christianity is where to milk poor people dry without them asking questions because their reward is in heaven. <laughs> you, you, you see the trick? <laughs> Your reward is not good roads here, not good schools. No, it's in heaven. But they themselves they have private jets on earth. And you go to the next week, you go, you give her, hey, he's a man of miracle, because you're very poor. Poverty stricken. Black people. Do you know they no longer go to church in Europe? <laughs> because they're all affluent, they're very rich. In America, the same. As I said earlier, it's only blacks that go to church and shouting, screaming up and down because they're the poor people. If you go to, they're the ones doing the cleaning. They are the lowest of the low. That's why they keep shouting every blessed day. You don't know that? Go and check now. Go to Africa. The whole of Africa is a church everywhere. The more church you build, the more poverty stricken you become. You can never learn anything from it. What does that tell you? That tells you all you need to know. Oh my goodness. Should I say short sighted, greedy fools using the Bible to deceive the gullible into thinking that Nigeria is sustainable? What is good about Nigeria to be sustained? Name one thing that's good about the zoo. Name one thing I'm asking you, they cannot name anything. Maybe it's tithes and offering. They love tithes and offering. And you people, idiotically, you go every Sunday and you pile on the cash. And they buy, keep buying new jets. Telling you Nigeria is good. Nigeria, oh, uh, God has a plan for Nigeria. So God uh, had a plan for Nigeria and he opened the borders to allow killers to come in. To be killing people. And they get, what planet does this people actually inhabit? Anyways, it's poverty. Once Biafra comes now, people will become very rich and very affluent. <laughs> and you'll see what will happen. People will submit themselves to reason. Not to these superstitious mumbo-jumbo people talking rubbish. I saw something in your life. I see something in your life. Oh dear, these people. They even have eight churches in one building. Well, some some will, will do, do service 8 to 10, or others take over 10 to 12. He says, it's something of the Holy Spirit. Europeans sat down and saw all of this rubbish many years ago and said, this is nonsense. Let us form the Enlightenment Movement. That is why Europe is number one in the whole world. By Europe, I mean, uh, who, who founded them? Who, who developed America? I, I don't know, Europeans. Brazil, Europe. Australia, Europe. New Zealand, Europe. Everywhere is Europe. You don't know that before? Every other person copy from them. You have to go and copy from Europeans. They are number one. God bless them. They are number one. Because they, they said, you see all these superstitions, when, when a kite flies past your house, 
or, or you see pussy cat in the morning. You, you you start speaking in tongues that your neighbor has come to get you. All this idiotic chinek and this UG black people. Ordinary pussy cat pursuing a, a, a mouse. It's the, your neighbor that sent the pussy cat. A tree that is in your village over a thousand years old is in your generation that the tree is not, is not an impediment. <laughs> and you want to be developed. <laughs> Black and this year. You see, you know that poverty, <laughs> you know that poverty is a evil spirit. When you're possessed by poverty, if somebody tells you to plant a seed and water it and do that, you'll be paying. <laughs> poverty. You know, they say Yahoo Yahoo boys eh, with computer. There are those with the Bible inside mega structures. Do be people every blessed day. Tell you that Nigeria can be saved. Ndoshi. They don't know anything about the word of God. I feel sorry for these people. I'm not insulting anyone, but I have to make the facts very clear for all of you to understand. Maybe in the future, our grandchildren will save these clips and then replay them. But I want you to remember something today. There was a time, the person who is responsible for the mobile phones you're using today, so to speak, Galileo, was called an antichrist. But today, some of you want iPhone 19, iPhone 56. Even the ones that have not, they have not made, you have placed order. But the idiocy of the people that tried to hold down that very invention, you are replicating today in Africa. Unbelievable. Let me go back to the question I asked you earlier. And I want you to ask the Deputy Speaker of the House of um, Senate. I want you to ask your governors. I want you to ask anybody around you tonight. Who brought foreign killers into Nigeria? Who brought them in? Why is it that that very question is not being asked every blessed day? Who brought them in to Nigeria? You cannot ask, can you? Any day you answer that question, any day all these criminal pastors can answer that very, very question, that very day you will begin to reason properly. You will see that Nigeria is unsustainable. Are you telling me that these people they love Nigeria so much? Let us assume that they, <laughs> they, they are patriotic Nigerians. Why would you go outside to go and bring in killers to come and kill your own fellow citizens? If you claim you love Nigeria. As Eurofile, that midget wants to, he's claiming today. That they are kidnappers, most of them we are foreigners. Who brought them into Nigeria? You I want to keep as one. The same Nigeria I want to keep as one. If there's anything that is a lie that I'm saying tonight, don't generalize. Come out and say that this is a lie. The Roman Catholic Church wanted to kill, they, they want to hang Galileo. For speaking the truth. Say to the man, oh God, the earth is not the center of the world. It's the, it's the sun that, it, that the earth revolves around the sun. It spins. The man, hey, you can't say that. He's Antichrist. You're Antichrist. You're against Jesus. Go, go and kill him. <laughs> oh, dear me. Today we know that the earth revolves around the sun. Spins at a speed of over 1,000 miles per hour on its elliptical orbit around the sun. When it goes around the sun, when it completes one full cycle, it becomes one year. That's how you have one year. So you are in 2021. The earth is still spinning around the sun. When it completes the cycle, 2021 will be finished. We'll go to 2022. The man said that is how life is. They said kill him. He's Antichrist. <laughs> Hey, open is your makan is in the dendro. Is your machineke? Because the zoo has fallen. Who brought foreign killers into Nigeria? Nobody can tell us. And the media, Yoruba media, Yoruba control the media, they should stop being afraid. Anytime they find one media house, every media house should go on strike and say they will not pay it. Fulani cannot do anything. Fulani only thrive when there is fear. When you have fear in you. You see them, you, you embolden them. 
But if you tell them that you are prepared to die, believe you me, they begin to go back and try to... But of course, negotiation is too late. Uh, doses that they sent to come, eh? <laughs> it's too late now. Negotiate with what? For what? Negotiate what? Restructuring? Originalism? On oh, 1960 constitution? It's too late now. If you want to know why, go to the book of Genesis, chapter 13, from verse 5 to 9. Because of Fulani, because of headsmen, let me not say Fulani headsmen, because of headsmen. The father of all nations, Abraham, Abraham separated from the from the knee, from the nephew, if I'm not mistaken. The same blood. He said, I don't want any trouble. Because of cattle, because of Nama. Because of Nama, the same Nama today causing us problem. Abraham said, No, go your own way. Let me go my own way, please. I want peace. Because of the same cattle, the same Nama today in this zoo called Nigeria. And uh, somebody's telling me they know the Bible. Somebody who comes out every day to claim he's a nationalist, a pride of Nigeria. He wants to be part of Nigeria. The, the so-called elite, that midget, that short engine in Kaduna, called the L5. Short engine. He is part and parcel of the Islamist movement to conquer all of you. And this is for Mrs. Tambuwal to conquer you as well. Mrs. Tambuwal, are you listening? Maybe you're snorting your final cocaine before you take your your Hennessy and go to and go to sleep. Mrs. Tambuwal, are you listening? Your husband in Sokoto does not wish you well. You are an infidel. If you don't know, let me educate you. Because what I give you is gospel of, from heaven itself, not of man. That is why nobody can fault, not one single thing that I say. No human being can. If you come out to debate me, I will sink you with facts and figures. Mlien and Andrew with facts and figures. Hagra school. I feel sorry for the first wife of um, Tambua. There's one that is snorting cocaine and, and drinking Hennessy. In, in Governor's Lodge, you need water. Saying he's from rivers. Does a human being... Can a human being come from rivers? It's mommy water that can come from a river now. Mommy, mommy water and fish. As for, and the mommy water that can come from rivers. I'm from rivers. Can, can you believe such rubbish? And they came, they went to school. I'm from rivers. Well, yeah, I'm from... I'm a, I'm a rivers man. So that means your papi water then, if you're a man. Not, 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 not mommy water. And uh, PhD holders, all, all lawyers. Mm, I don't know. I'm from Rivers. That's okay. Uh, hi, Mami Water. I'm from Rivers. Hi, Papi Water. See, see, you're from the water. You're from Rivers. Can a human being come from Rivers? I'm asking this very simple question. Papi Water. You're from the. I'm from Rivers. I'm, I'm, I'm we Rivers people. <laughs> hey, <dear> me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe I'm from ocean. I, I, I'm from Oceania. Or, uh, uh, I'm from the ocean. Or maybe from the stream. Where you be? Stream. Or uh, Iyokata. I'm from Iyokata. Maybe I'm from the stream. Since, since you're from the river, I'm from the stream. And uh, maybe my younger brother is from the ocean. Hey, I, I can't understand. I can't understand. And they claim they went to school. Oh, me, me, uh, my poor brother or sister, where do you come? I'm from Rivers. I'm a Rivers man. <laughs> hey, hey, Lord have mercy. Ah, <sighs> oh, dear me. Zoological Republic. Zoo. <laughs> Zoo. Let me preach the gospel that I've been asked to preach to you tonight. Who brought foreign terrorists, murderers, and killers into Nigeria? I want to tell you, because all of you do not reason. Tomorrow night, he will appear on Channel's TV. Channel's will not ask this very man. Why did you go outside to pay killers? Why? Let me read it for you. It is a Vanguard publication, December 3, 2016. Go and dig it out. What's the title? We've paid some full need to stop killings in Southern Kaduna, but today they're still killing. They're still kidnapping. 
It is part of the game plan. It is part of their game plan. They planned all these things, but Mrs. Tambuwal can, or maybe Papi Water cannot understand what I'm saying. Because most of the time, he's under the influence of cocaine and Hennessy. He doesn't understand what I'm saying. Umar, he cannot understand what I'm saying. He's blinded by this. Uh, I think the, from he wanted to be the president. They promised him vice. From vice now, they 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 have now told him he's going to be the minister of agriculture. <laughs> hey, that was why he left PDP to APC. Only in the zoo. Only in the zoological republic. We have paid some full money to stop killings in Southern Kaduna. I want every Nigerian to go and Google this. It's carried by a Vanguard publication, December 3, 2016. We have paid some full money to stop killings in Southern Kaduna. These killings started as soon as the late dead Buhari was sworn into power. Buhari was sworn into power, I think it was around May or whatever, isn't it? Of the same uh, they say. If not up to one year, they went to go and bring killers. Or some of them that they had brought in to, re, to, to, to fight war if they, if they lose the election. You don't understand? Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Let me read the news for you so you understand. Tomorrow he'll come out and he uh, 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 will prepare and build bridges. They cannot, I know he was talking about me. You cannot, in the, you cannot be insulting people. You cannot be insulting people. You need to build bridges. What stupid bridge do I have to build with a, with a terrorist like you? Let me tell you what has been happening in the zoo. That some of you may not understand, but I have to tell you all the same. Before you go and uh, pay your tithe and uh, sow your seed, Ndara, use your brain. I want to tell you what has been happening in the zoo called Nigeria. That the so called governors, the same so called Fulani elite, they are the ones killing you today. We tried to fight back in um, not uh, that pampas wearing non entity in state, Hopus Adema. They don't understand what we're saying. Vanguard publication, December 3, 2016. We have paid some Fulani to stop. Fulani, he said Fulani. The killers are Fulani. He said, we have paid Fulani to stop killings in Southern Kaduna. El Rufai. The Kaduna State Governor, Malam Nasser El Rufai, has said his government has traced some... How did you manage to trace people who are violent? How? That is the question. El Rufai, how do, did you manage to, to find out where they were living? Now, follow this news very carefully, please. Kaduna State Governor Malam Nasser El Rufai has said his government has traced some violent, aggrieved Fulani to their countries. Huh? What type of God? What type of God? What type of God made these people? Am I, am I going crazy or what? Kaduna State Governor said, we have managed to trace some violent, aggrieved Fulani to their countries and paid them to stop the killing in southern Kaduna. Chine Kemie, what is this? What is this I'm asking people? Are you people, all these so-called Nigerians, what is wrong with you people? A governor, how do you know they're angry to start with? How do you know they're angry? Oh, when they, before they went back to, to, to Timbuktu, they, they stopped over at your house to tell you, oh, oh madam, we are angry, oh, oh we are leaving, oh, we are coming back to come and kill. Shine kemi ye. Chai, 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 Nigeria. Who did this to you? Black people, who did this to you? Who did this to you? Why did you pay them? We paid them so they can stop the destruction of communities in southern Kaduna. The same place they went and still kidnapped people. After paying them money, in fact, they even called them bandits then in December 3, 2016. Now, do you understand? Mrs. Tambuwal, do you understand? Omahi, are you following what I'm saying? Uh, the Pampas wearing governor, do you not even administrator? Sarakin Fulani, are you following me now? You must state. You killed your brother Ikonso because of the same people that went to Mali, they went to Niger to go and pay Fulani people money, not to come to Nigeria to kill Nigerians. Hey! I, I, I will stop. You know, sometimes. There is a way you look into the well so much, you fall in. You suffer from maybe vertigo or whatever, and you fall. I don't want... There is... 
sometimes when I research the zoo, I'm telling you, the, I, 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 I feel like I'm reading a, a, a book of fiction. It's not possible. Some of the things are not just possible. You're telling me that the president of the United States of America can go to Canada uh, looking for, for I, I don't know, I can't even, let me, let me even use Ghana. I, can I use Ghana? Ghanaian president uh, traveled to, 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 what's it called, um, to Burkina Faso to pay some people in Burkina Faso not to come into Ghana, into Kumasi to kill people. I mean, does it, uh, maybe it's me, maybe I'm losing my mind. Oh. Does it make any sense to anybody? I'm just as simple. Does it make any sense to anybody? These are the people you call your elite. This is uh, somebody. Uh, a devil you want to pray for this monkey. This 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 midget, this monkey. That he will be the president of Nigeria. A man of God. Oh, I must uh, I must speak the truth anyway. That's what I'm here to do. These are the same people doing profiling. We want to profile those. <laughs> How full are you? people must think we are all foolish. You people think that these your so-called Nigerians are so useless. They are so useless. They don't know anything. The same people that went outside to go and pay their fellow Fulani money, give them arms, open the borders for them to come in to kill people, uh, the same people telling you, a federal government begins profiling of Nigerians linked to terrorism financing. The same Fulani presidency. The same people that brought in armed criminals from across the Sahel to come to take over your land from you. They are the ones now telling you that they are to begin profiling of Nigerians linked to terrorism. They are, they are talking about terrorism financing. Understand? It's in, it's in Channels TV, they carried it. The federal government has begun profiling towards prosecution well placed Nigerians suspected of being financiers of terrorism in the country. Now, let me take you back to what I just said a few minutes ago. They are profiling. But El Rufai is not being profiled. El Rufai, we have paid money to Fulani in, across the Sahel to stop killing people. And a short while earlier, I told you, hey, these people, they don't know who they're playing with. A short while earlier, I told you that uh, the students of um, agriculture school or whatever it's called said that the bandits who kidnapped them are foreigners. In other words, putting one plus one, giving us two, El Rufai paid his people to come to kidnap us in our own country, so to speak, according to these kids here. The same people who are responsible for terrorism are the sponsor is there looking at you in the face. El Rufa is a terror sponsor. You're telling me you're profiling terror sponsors. Whereas El Rufa is there you, looking at you in the face. El Rufa is there looking at you in the face and he confirmed with his mouth I sponsor terrorism because today there are still killings going on in Southern Kaduna, isn't it? Is that, not, uh, is that not happening? Do you see why black people are poor? Do you see why why God sometimes uh, go, just goes... When God is blessing other parts of the world, when it comes to Africa, he will just fly past and say, this plan is not serious. He will continue on his journey. Do you understand me now? The same people that paid their fellow... They didn't say we paid Hausa. Or we paid uh, Bachama people. Or we paid the Kanuri people. No, they said that we paid the Fulani to stop killing. Which is Fulani is in the killings then. And now somebody who's a Fulani is telling me we are profiling Nigerians, sponsoring terrorism. When a Fulani governor of Kaduna State opened his mouth and said, I, I gave terrorists money. Now you understand it, don't you? We are well read. We possess an analytical mind. We analyze everything, everything. But um, <laughs> the zoo will realize when it's very, very late. Very, very late. And he's an intellectual. When he, when he see the little, the little oh, bed bug, he's like a bed bug. Uh, 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 what is it called? Uh, um, what's a uh, bed bug again? Hey, oh, we, we, we his head fly. He, he's not a bad bug now. That's us blood. He's like a bad bug, as tiny as, any, as a rat. 
He can fit into a pigeon hole of a car. Just as, as small as as demonic as they come. Elufai. Change. That's a bed bug. Is, uh, it's change. It's change. It's called change. He's claiming. When you see him talk, hey Nigeria, let's move the country forward. All progressives must gather. We progressives, the idiot is a terrorist. He's the one paying bandits to come in to kill people. And you're profiling. We want to profile. When this idiot opened his mouth to say, I went to Gampe and bring terrorists into the country to come and kill all of you idiot, idiotic Nigerians. You want to begin profiling. Why don't you start from El Rufai that brought foreign bandits in the first place? Why don't you go and profile him? It's called change. A I, I, bed bug is change. That's, that's how... <laughs> no other name is called. Bed bug is change. That's what it's called. To, to drink your blood in the middle of the night like Fulani Janja weed headsmen. Terrorists. Brought Miet Yala. Miet Yala is a legi legitimate stakeholder. The fourth largest terror group in the world. Legitimate stakeholder. And all of you are Nigeria. Let's pray for our country. Uh, uh, Archbishop uh, uh, of uh, Ecumenical Council. You stupid idiotic titles that has, that has no meaning whatsoever. Stupid idiotic titles. That has no meaning. Ndiara. Those doing profiling are the same people that are that integrated full and murderers into the army. You're doing profiling. You didn't do profile when you said full, full and terrorists have repented. They are in the army. They are in the police. You are now you're doing profiling after putting them in the army. Does that make any sense to anybody? Only in the zoo. Only in the zoo. Only in the zoological republic. The same people, the same full army people that brought in their terrorists into the army, sent some of them to Allah. The same people that have a terrorist as a serving minister, who is privy to every intelligence secret in the in the zoo. These fools are still asking or wondering about the identity of the people leaking key intelligence secrets, uh, like even their troop movement to the savages from the foothills of the Jalom. To their own fellow in house bread terrorists. They are profiling Nigerians. To confuse all of you idiots. And Yoruba media will buy this rubbish hook, line, and sinker as if they are fools, as if they are not educated, as if they don't have any brain. The same thing with their useless pastors, idiotic pastors, claiming they are serving Christ, but they're watching as things are going wrong. They, they did not hear about Martin Luther King. They claim they are pastors. They do not know about Dr. Martin Luther King that fought for the freedom you have for blacks in America today. They did not hear about Desmond Tutu from the pulpit preaching the word of God and challenging evil. This idiot tell me about one night. Second like Uni in Hoko. Thunder fire all of you idiotic pastors claiming praying for one Nigeria. You people are fools. You people are fools. I'm telling you, you are fools. All of you are fools. You are wondering those who, uh, who, who, are, who should be profiled. When the Minister of Terrorism, Pantami, is there during cabinet meeting, you are discussing troops' movement. You are discussing who to deploy to where. They will go and tell Boko Haram they work for you on the road. They will kill you. You are telling me about profiling. You cannot profile Pantami, who is there. You cannot profile El Rufai, who is there. You are doing profiling. And the civilian is there like a, like a church rat under the cabinet. Cannot say a word. Stick out and say, let's, let's pray for the country. What is the zoo you, all of you want to say? From the other, a country that of 200 million people, they claim you cannot remove one single full and terrorist from office. Not one. And you're telling me that you people are you people are civilized. Our country. Let us uh, let us conscientize. Let us uh, come together. God punish all of you, Ndiara. God punish all of you, useless people. How can we now distinguish between a genuine army and a genuine police officer? Some of you say, oh, unknown government, unknown government. How do you know that those unknown government are killing and not terrorists? How do you know that? This is a country that brought in terrorism into the army, brought terrorism into the police. All of you are there just watching and moping, doing nothing. Doing nothing. And terrorists are in the army, killing innocent people. I said to them, I will cause so much havoc, I want to go to Hague to go and face trial in the Hague. At Omega Hague, I want to go to Hague. So I will expose the zoo to the whole world, that the world may know how foolish black people are. 
They brought terrorists, the same killers of our people in our churches, they bring them into the army. What do you think they're going to do? Common sense. What do you think they're going to do? I'm asking you. What do you think they're going to do? All of you idiots in the zoo, what do you think bringing terrorists into the army is going to do? How do we know who is a terrorist and who is a regular soldier? How do we know that? Then answer, me, answer my question. is a very simple question, please. Answer me. How can we distinguish between even terrorists? So you're telling me now, if, if, a chineke me a zoo, hi, God in heaven. Now, a full and a terrorist from Niger Republic, from Mali, is, is in Southern Cardinal killing people and abducting. You arrest him, you rehabilitate him, you put him in the army. Is he a Nigerian or is he a, a, a Malian? God in heaven. God in heaven. Please give your people some sense. Give your people some sense. Oh, Heavenly Father, God Almighty in heaven, give us some sense. In this OGD, believe the black people are foolish. I'm telling you, black people are useless. You are telling me that a killer brought in by El Rufai can be killing people in Southern Kaduna. They arrest him or they catch him or he decides to repent. Now he is in the army and he's in Olu killing people. Oh, Chinakin, God in heaven. I don't know who they are. But I support unknown gunmen. I don't know who they are, but I pray for them and I support them. I, I, this is the question I want to ask Nigerian government in the court of law anywhere in the world. How do you know that those that deployed in our law are not terrorists? How do you know that in uniform? How do you know? Since they, they incorporate terrorists into the army, terrorists into the police, how do you know? Nobody can answer me. Oh my God in heaven. Nobody right now, uh, in fact, I'm telling all of you, we, mu we must see every police officer and every army personnel deployed to Biafra land as our enemy. Every policeman, every army we see is our enemy. Because how do we know which one is a terrorist recruited by El Rufa into the army? From, not even local terrorists, from, 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 from Mali, from Senegal from Gambia, from Niger, how do we know? Because once you catch them, you integrate them into the army. You don't ask them, oh, where are you from? Before we... Hey, God. Hey. Now you can see the reason why most people are happy when there is this clash, alleged clash between alleged police and alleged people that we don't know their names. I want to ask Daily Trust newspaper, Premium Times, these are full of newspapers. How do we distinguish between a genuine Nigerian soldier and a terrorist from Mali wearing army uniform that, that, that claim he or she has repented? It's a simple question. Because when we come from the General Force, I mean, it's a very simple question. How do we know? That army on a checkpoint, how do we know if they are terrorists or not? To explain that to me. Because you people are the ones bringing terrorists into the army and into the police. How do we know? You see, you can never win against us. None of you can win against us. How can we distinguish between a genuine army or police officer and those terrorists from the Sahel that El Rufai and the Fulani Cabal, Fulani Caliphate brought in to take over our land from us, whose intention from the onset is to do us harm. How do we know? They are now in the army, they are now in the police. That is why all army and police units deployed to Biafra land must be seen as enemies. Nobody at the defense headquarters of Nigeria, the National Assembly, no governor, no sophisticated moron, no Efulefu, can tell us who is a genuine soldier and who is a full and a terrorist turned into a soldier. Nobody can tell us. Nobody can tell us. This is the mess. This is the mess the world must come to terms with because we do not know who is a terrorist in the army or police uniform. Therefore, all of them are terrorists to us. All of them are terrorists. These full and a government are the ones that brought terrorism into the army. They integrated terrorists into the army. Now you understand why 
they decided to deploy exclusively Fulani officers to lead the invasion and occupation of our law and parts of Biafra land. Let me ask the Sarikan Fulani, the Supreme Court administrator of Imo State, and the judge will be also, and the cocaine snorting Mr. Stambuwal of River State. How are you sure these Fulani soldiers you are requesting to come and protect you does not contain the same Fulani terrorists that set out from the Sahel to kill you in the first place? You people are beyond stupid. You people are beyond idiocy. I'm telling you the truth. Beyond idiocy. Beyond foolish. The time now is three minutes past 9 p.m. in the land of Biafra. Three minutes past the top there. I must preach. If you want me to stop, I will stop. It's still two hours. If you want me to stop, I will stop. I've been given a message to preach and I must preach it. That the world may bear me witness. That in his time, he came and he spoke the truth. Not minding whose ox is God. I don't give a damn who you are. Nigerian army shuns southern officers, deploys northern commanders to quell tension in the southeast. Only northern officers. Only northern officers. How do we know? That is how the zoo runs. Send southerners to, to Brano. Send northerners down to Imo State to come and kill people. Because they are not from your ethnic group. And as you are coming, you are going to die there. You will die and your land will be taken over by the real terrorists this time around. Let southern officers go and police their land. You say, no, 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 they cannot go. You bring people from the Sahel. They don't speak English. They don't speak Hausa. They don't speak nothing. They come with their AK-47. To kill, to maim, to pillage, to rape and to kidnap. And you want us to tolerate it. It is raining very, very heavily where I am, please. You must bear with me. You must bear with me. It is raining very, very heavily. You may hear the noise, but I must preach the gospel that Elohim has mandated me to preach. I must preach it regardless of what the weather says. It must be preached this very evening. I must preach it. And the zoo. May bed bug suck all your blood away. Useless people that cannot listen very well. Useless, useless people. I am here to make you reason for once in your stupid lives. To be able to reason. To reason so that you can come out of the mess that you're in. That you can come out of the rubbish, idiotic mess that some of you are in. People who cannot, who cannot think straight. Who cannot think straight. How do we know? They are bringing all of them. As for the likes of the Omahi and his friends did. They proscribed IPOB without provocation. You invited the army through Python Downs to come and kill me and my family, and you ended up killing all Biafrans. And as a result, my parents are dead today. You must hear this. I am going to reply Omahi through a quote by Emiliano Zapata. We do not want the peace of slaves, nor the peace of the grave. Do you understand that? Full army must leave our land. Biafra must be declared with full, uninterrupted sovereignty. Biafra is what we are looking for. Nothing more. If you are looking for people to bribe, you are mistaken. We are unbribable. We are unbribable. We don't need anything from anybody. We are asking for Biafra and Biafra we are going to get. Or we all die in the process. I assure you of that. So you must understand that very well. Under your watch, Umahi, for six years, Nieti Allah, your friends, we are busy killing our people in Ebony. You did nothing. Instead, you encouraged them against your own people. When IPOB rose up four years ago to challenge them, you sent the police and the army to go and kill people. Those defending your land. You sent the police and the army to go and kill people. You sent the police and the army to go and kill people. I am glad that today, Dave Umahi, with his mouth, has confessed that no more Mieti Allah terrorists in, in a Boeing state. Who made it possible, I ask of you? Who made it possible, I ask of you? The volunteer command of indigenous people of Biafra. Now, Eastern Security Network. You understand that? We drove away the fourth most deadly terror group in the world away from a Boeing state. Something Umahi could not do. Something no governor could have done. We did it ourselves. Of course, by the grace of the most Elohim up in heaven. 
Today you are posting. Uh, we, we don't have any more Mietiala. No head, no headsmen in Ebony State. Who made it possible? I ask of you. The same people that you proscribed, the same indigenous people of Biafra. You're not ashamed of yourself. You're looking for who to negotiate with. You're idiot, okay? You're a fool. You're a complete fool. I am glad I have confessed. The same IPOB volunteers and ESN you despise so much. If any of you, a fool, a fool think that allowing foreign terrorists into our land guarantees you a path to us, rock, then you are more foolish than I thought. None of you Igbo politicians will smell us rock. None of you will ever go to us rock. You will never go to us rock. Never, ever, ever. No Igbo If you like, you try and see now. Of course, there will be no campaign, so talk less of that, that, that rubbish. None of you will smell us rock. Since all of you came out to gang up against Biafra, none of you will ever smell us rock. None of you will. It's like a good up here. The same politics of, of, of appeasement of Azikiwe that landed us in the mess we are in today is what you want to play again only this time around with the very worst the foreign race has to offer which is their terrorism in Mietiala. Shame on all of you cowards, masquerading as defenders of the people. Shame on all of you pastors claiming you're preaching the word of God. You are all serpents, all of you. Ndoshi. Today you fools are condemning the holy saints on non con men. You have forgotten that you people created them. When you were killing young people, slaughtering them left, right, and center, you don't know that one day they will rise up. Is that what you think? Is that what you're thinking? One day they will rise and have risen up. One day they will rise. If you kill them, they will kill you. If you kill them, they will kill you. The killing will continue until you leave our land. It can never stop. It can never ever stop, I assure you. You, you fools are condemning unknown gunmen. But when you are killing people, you are enjoying it. At some all, you slaughtered. At Enugu, you killed. Igbo Ocha, you killed. National High School, Laba, you killed. You think we can fold our hands? You keep killing for eternity? Now you know you bleed as well. That thing you have, we have it. You kill us, we kill you. You arrest us, we are going to arrest your children. Anything you want, we give you. Because it is Biafra or death. Biafra or we all die. Get in Biafra. You, you, I remember how they were jubilating when people were being forced to drink dirty water. They were jubilating. You did not call your army to order. You did not call your police to order. Now, people are angry. You are writing your usual junk. What will kill Fulani is hoopies. Hoopies will kill you. I told you I will draw your army to the east. As I draw your army into the east, terrorists will occupy your land and it's going to happen. Because I know you have stupid pride and ego. You will take the bait because you are Fulani. You are foolish. You will take this bait I'm handing over to you. You will come to Biafra land there. We are going to kill you. You will die in Biafra land. You are going to perish there. Your army will die in Biafra land. Fulani Empire, the end of Fulani Caliphate will start from Biafra land. It will start from Olo. I assure you, it start from Olo. The end of Fulani Caliphate in Sokoto will begin in Olo. Write it down somewhere that I told you this, this very day. The end of Fulani Caliphate will start from all in Nemo State. Go and make it down somewhere. It is called hubris. You are, you are going to get it. Do you know what they did? Your so-called DSS abducting people? Go to the tweet by Senator Shea, who said, you know, he's full on it. But sometimes he is like a human being. I don't know, maybe his, his father, his, he must ask his mom where she went to uh, before they conceived him. Because he doesn't reason like a typical Janjaweed. He doesn't reason like a typical Janjaweed. In Nupe land, Nupe in Niger state, Nupe land is flowing with blood every blessed day. Do you know what DSS said? DSS wrote a, a, a memo. Helping people everywhere in the East. Do, do you know that DSS wrote a memo? Asking Niger people not to panic, that the bandits are passing their area, not to panic. Are you aware of that? Are you aware of that? That they wrote saying, oh, bandits are passing your area, you don't have to panic. But in our land, they are kidnapping people. The same DSS are busy kidnapping people. But 
in Niger State, DSS, Department for State Security, or SSS. They are busy giving passageway to terrorists who have come to kill you. And you're telling me you're in one Nigeria. What stupid one Nigeria is that? What stupid? Shay Hussani tweeted a, a message. People living in the askers of Abuja, we are told by DSS not to panic and run when they were about to see headsmen on transit. Headsmen on transit with AK-47 inside Abuja. DSS. Why? Because it's being controlled by Fulani. I know the foolish arrogance and the pride of the Fulani will lead them to come to Biafra land and there they will die. I'm telling you the truth. They will die there. Excessive pride is what's going to kill them. And nemesis will consume them in our land. I'm, I'm telling you that. Nigeria is dead as a result of full and foolishness and pride. The most backward, unindigenous tribe in Nigeria coming to conquer the owners of the land. And full and they can never ever take one inch of Biafra land. They cannot take it. DSS is colluding with them, writing a letter to villagers telling them not to panic. DSS abducting people, telling them we want Nigeria. Our people cannot see because they are foolish. Full and they want to take our land. Can't you see it? Can't you see it? I'm asking you. Can you not see it? The zoo is dead and can never, ever be resurrected. Leah Shwaibu is in captivity. Had Leah Shwaibu been a Muslim girl by now, every Christian in the north would be killed. But she is still in captivity. And all I hear stupid Christian pastors saying is tight and offering one Nigeria, one Nigeria. Whereas a Christian girl is in captivity. In captivity. The same thing cannot happen to a Muslim girl. Nothing. The same DSS, the same DSS kidnapping people are the ones granting passage to terrorists in Niger State and in Abuja. The same people. Don't take my word for it. It was tweeted by a Fulani man, a Fulani senator, an ex Fulani senator, Sheikh Hussani. What does that tell you about one Nigeria? What does it tell you about one Nigeria? I'm asking you. This is the one Nigeria of TB Joshua. This is the one Nigeria of Adoboye. This is the one Nigeria of all these criminal pastors. This is one Nigeria for you. We are DSS on one hand. is that people in the south and in the north. They are giving passageway to terrorists. Oh my goodness me. They said they're coming to Olo to come and do shit at sight in Olo. And I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring it on. Come to Olo and do shit at sight and go free. Come and do it now. Let us see. Come and do shit at sight. I'm praying for it. Come and do shit at sight. Come and do shit at sight. I said to you before, you don't understand how mad we are about Biafra. I will sacrifice anything for Biafra. Are you prepared to do something for Nigeria? Will you do the same for Nigeria? I'm asking you. Will you do the same for Nigeria? I'm asking you. Will you do the same for this zoological republic? Anything you want, we give to you. Come and do your shoot aside. Come now, we are waiting. Come and do it. You know, alone. Then you will see hell. You have seen nothing yet. What you are seeing now, you're complaining. You are about to see more. Since those of them are prefers. To do shit aside. I am asking Biafrans tonight to prepare for all out war. Because if they carry out this very threat, every APC person in the East will go down. If you're in APC, I don't care. If you're Igbo, you're Yoruba, I don't care where you come from. If you're in the East, you will go down. Let them carry this shit aside. Let them carry it out. Every APC politician will die. I assure you of that. Then you know how we saying we are. Come and carry it out now. Let us see you. Let, let, let us see you. They are useless, idiotic people. Useless, idiotic people. Anybody who supports one Nigeria is your enemy. Is your enemy. They are gaining something from you. They don't want you to be free. That person is your enemy. And you must fight that very person with the last thing that you have in your possession. If full they, 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 they think they are stubborn. You went to Apsu to go and take students. You think you, you, you are stubborn. We know where you took them to. I gave you 48 hours within 24, you released them. 
I know you should you, you hold on to them now. Can go see you to okay, man. Hold on to them, you will see what will happen to you. If you are in the army or police, leave Biafra land. Take a burn your uniform. Burn it. Burn your uniform because oh uh, anyway. Let, let, let me not go too far. Let me not go too far. In Kanu State, in your so-called one Nigeria, they have banned dancing during wedding. You can no longer. There are dances that are considered immoral in, in Kanu State. And that is where you claim you're in this. Let me, let me bring this program to, to a close. But I want to respond to what Mrs. Tambuwal of River State said. I understand he is always under the influence of drugs. So I will try to take my time to explain things to him, but maybe not tonight. Maybe not tonight. I will dissect it in, in two days' time. Today is Sunday. On Tuesday night, I will dissect. How will the ocean succumb? Or stream? Or mountain? Or valley? If river cannot succumb to cessation, maybe ocean will, Atlantic Ocean will. So-called educated people. R rivers cannot succumb to cessation. What is rivers? You were created to spite Biafra. Core states, Cross River, Ogoja rivers, created by Gowon to divide Biafra. You fool, you bought into it, hook, line, and sinker, because you were trained with abandoned property money. You're a thief. Your family are rogues. You people benefited from abandoned property. That is why you're talking this nonsense about rivers. Maybe we should talk, next time we talk about the ocean. Mad, mad people. You are from Guinea. You went to Bini, they rejected you. They told you you're not from Bini. Is that not the case? Equally people from Unkole are no longer Igbos. They are from they are, they are from Bini. Shameless idiot like you. Woki Begi, Woki Begi, you have no brain. You you snort cocaine and you drink you drink Hennessy. A fellow man, idiot with after you be talking like somebody who, who has been in a village Diapalo for the past two weeks. Rever reverse people. What's the meaning of rivers? What is the meaning of rivers? You idiot, I'm asking you. What's the meaning of rivers? These are the so-called lawyers you have in the zoo. No wonder there is no there is no there, there is no judiciary in the zoo with idiots like you everywhere. In the, in the era, lunatics all over the place. You are from Bini. Bini rejected you. You are, not, you are, not, you are rivers. We, we, we rivers. How about we ocean? Oh, Chineke Menune. But I will look into your case in, in greater detail next time. I will tell you about equally men who are proud to be more people. Because you are a complete fool and an idiot. During the referendum, you only have one vote. We can, you only have one vote. Because you are in government house. Uh, all of a sudden, you are rivers. Uh, 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 very soon, you'll be ocean. Ndara. Let me very quickly, uh, because what I wanted to preach tonight is just too many. But I want to let our people understand this, that the media blackmail against IPOB has increased recently. If you go to Google now and you type in Nam the Kano, believe you me, all you see are news from BBC. And you know that BBC... Uh, neo colonialists, you know that BBC, even including BBC, they are working for slave masters in Britain. You must understand that. I was very, very disheartened that even Amnesty International have been bought over by the zoo as well because they have limitless cash, they can buy up anybody. They have bought over Google, they have also bought over Amnesty International in Nigeria, who are now carrying unverified news by people that want to sustain that want to sustain the zoological republic daily trust punch newspaper and all the rest of them even amnesty international no investigation done and amnesty is carrying such rubbish on their twitter handle a whole amnesty because anything that comes to nigeria is, is corrupt isn't it if you are not corrupt when you come nigeria will corrupt you and i'm sad to say that amnesty international in nigeria they have now been compromised fully they have now been bought over by the zoo. All the years of threat has paid off. They have now been compromised. Our media must wake up and do the needful. There must be daily rebuttals.
to checkmate what all these evil people are doing against us. They can never prevail. We have always defeated the zoo. In this very battle, we are also going to defeat them. We are going to defeat them. I have a few special announcements to make tonight, and I want to make it very, very clear. Okay, try and one. You know, when people are in IPOB, uh, they think they've arrived. You know, everybody must stick to their lane, please. I don't want anybody from the U.S. to participate in our rapid response or medical call anymore, because that was a serious breach of security. I want everybody to stay in their lane and not to cross over to jobs I have not allocated to them. Nobody from the USA will participate in our rapid response group or in our medical call. Dr. Onyise is hereby suspended from IPOB with immediate effect. Anybody who deals with him will be expelled from the movement. Dr. Onyise is suspended love in my heart from me from here. Good evening. Another Savior. Holy, 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 Special dedication to the gallant heroes of the Nigerian Biafra War and IPM families all over the world. I remember the Nigerian Biafra War mm, in the thickness of the Biafra genocide. Hey, one man revived the vanishing hope to life. Ah, let the great Biafra army the fight, and they were singing out. Holy, 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 holy. Mm, when I'm single, oh. holy, 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 holy,